So why write an op-ed uh, basically extolling the virtues of a $15 minimum wage? Well, for a couple of reasons, uh, primarily because uh, Amazon has been a subject in uh, political debate uh, in the campaign, especially on the Democratic side of late. And uh, we welcome uh, the attention. We welcome the scrutiny. But we also want to make sure that uh, those who are paying attention to that part of the debate understand what Amazon really is and what we're about. One of the things I wrote in that column is that uh, phrases like big tech and the tech industry, uh, they uh, obscure more than they enlighten. I mean, you guys know at CNBC how different we are as a company from some of our quote unquote big tech peers. I mean, our primary business is to uh, store, pick, pack, and deliver billions of physical goods. That requires enormous infrastructure and an enormous amount of employment. That's very different from trading in bits of data. Uh, we don't offer uh, a service free of charge in exchange for your data that we then monetize. That's very different from some other business models. Uh, but the, 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 the focus of that piece was, you know, that moment when Bernie Sanders, a senator from Vermont, a champion of workers' right. rights, called me to congratulate Amazon on raising our minimum wage to $15 an hour. Uh, and that puts us well ahead of our competitors in the retail industry, uh, it, coupled with enormously uh, uh, positive uh, health care and uh, maternity leave benefits right. uh, that nobody else in, among our competitors uh, can match, uh, as well as Although, uh, huge investment in upskilling. All right. So then why not just pay the wage and, and go about your business? Why and try to convince because, others to do because, so? Because, Jay, the, 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 the uh, response is, oh, Amazon's big enough, they can afford it, and they want to crush rivals who perhaps can afford it less. Well, I think that some of the rivals we're talking about are awfully big. Uh, in fact, much bigger than we are. It's often uh, misunderstood that Amazon's not even the biggest retailer in the United States. Uh, Walmart is uh, uh, by uh, almost uh, two and a half times the size of Amazon. Uh, and, and we believe that $15 an hour, as a lot of progressives believe, is the minimum that any, anybody in the United States should be paid for an hour of labor. Uh, you know that that doesn't buy very much. By setting our minimum, as we did in November of 2018 at $15 an hour, uh, we drove uh, wage in increases not just within Amazon, but uh, across the country. Everywhere where we invest and we offer that minimum, uh, and, and many country, in many regions of the country, the minimum is above 15 for us. Uh, that helps workers uh, around the region, and it helps uh, drive uh, activity in the economy that, again, uh, produces more growth. Jay, I get the case for $15 minimum wage and why you wrote the op-ed around that, but it also came on the heels of this letter from 13 members of the U.S. Senate who weren't talking about minimum wage, who were talking about safety record and looking for a response mm -hmm. from Amazon. That wasn't exactly addressed in the op-ed. How would you address that now? Well, the, the op-ed was written before the... Uh, the letter, but look, these. One of the things I say in the op-ed is, you know, we're a big institution, we're we're a large company. Like all big institutions, we we should be scrutinized. And our job, uh, I run both uh, public relations and public policy, which means our, our our conversations with governments, is to make sure we we uh, pass that scrutiny with with flying colors. So we'll engage as we have with members of Congress uh, on this issue. The facts, uh, as anybody who studies. Uh, uh, injury reports uh, understands is that uh, across the country injuries are woefully underreported. That was true at Amazon a uh, number of years ago, and then we changed the way we report injuries. Uh, that spiked the numbers for us. Uh, we we report well above what's required by OSHA, but we did it because we wanted the data. We wanted to know exactly what was happening so we could invest uh, accordingly to improve uh, the working conditions for our workers. And we're putting in another three hundred million dollars this year. Uh, on safety projects to do just that. And look, I would say uh, we welcome the letter. Uh, 13 uh, United States senators, incredibly important people. Uh, they all know that our fulfillment centers, our warehouses are open to public tours. Uh, we've invited every member of Congress to, to come have a look for themselves at the working conditions in our FCs. Uh, uh, far less than a majority of those senators have ever visited one. So we, we would love to have all of them come. Jay, on Jedi, uh, is it really yeah. your calculation that you're going to get to depose the president? Well, it's, uh, that's for lawyers and courts to decide. Uh, it's very important to us that uh, a legal, full legal review take place to examine what we believe was blatant political interference uh, that took place uh, in this process that affected uh, the decision that was made. And, and that's because on the merits, uh, we believe, and, and uh, the case will contend that uh, as a uh, there were flaws in the decision-making process 
uh, as you know, again, it's, it's a pleasure to talk to folks who, who know this business. Uh, AWS, by virtue of its early start in cloud computing and its, uh, uh, its aggressive innovation over the years, is just uh, you know, a, a superior service uh, right now to, to our competitors. We offer a more comprehensive uh, service uh, of the kind that the Department of Defense was looking for. And, and all we're uh, trying to do through this protest and this uh, request for uh, a legal review is uh, to ensure that uh, a proper decision is made on behalf of U.S. taxpayers. Yeah, just to dig into that a little bit more, Jay, I mean, protests are a reality of government contracting. It happens often, especially in high-profile, high-value uh, competitions like this one. So it's not surprising to see Amazon uh, put a protest forward and go through the court process per se. But history shows that to see a competition award overturned, it, it's very rare. So this is also mm -hmm. seen as something that's kind of high-profile and risky. Is this really about Jedi itself, or is there more on the line for Amazon? No, I think it's, it's about ensuring that the government, the Department of Defense, uh, is uh, free of political interference in these kinds of decisions that affect, uh, you know, the capabilities of our armed services. Uh, and that, as you said, there are a lot of protests in this arena. This one, uh, and therefore they, a lot of them don't succeed. I would say this one's highly unusual uh, for some of the reasons that we've laid, in our, laid out in our filings. Uh, pretty... Uh, Pretty unusual to have this kind of uh, political interference that was seen in this case, and and we just want you know independent uh, legal review to assess what happened here and, and and make the right decision. Jay, another area of criticism the company comes in for is in the area of taxes. Um, nothing obviously uh, considered, uh, uh, everything considered within the law, but nonetheless you're incredibly aggressive at Amazon at seeking. Uh, to always avoid as much as you possibly can. I think a 1.2% tax rate on 2019. Prior to that, I don't believe the company had paid federal taxes for a couple of years. New York, I was certainly, as our viewers know, very much in favor of the idea of a headquarters in Queens, but the critics of it came back to those tax incentives time and again, warping them a bit, no doubt. But why is Amazon, as one of the largest companies in this country, so aggressive on taxes? Shouldn't you pay your, pair, uh, pay your fair share? Well, uh, let me tease apart these two things. On, on uh, the taxes we pay, we pay what, what the law says we have to pay, like every company in the country and like every individual who files his or her uh, personal income taxes. We take advantages take advantage of the incentives that are in the tax code, uh, the, uh, you know, the ability to, to, to take deductions. And as you know, for decades, uh, with both Democrats and Republicans in charge, the U.S. tax code has created incentives for companies that heavily invest uh, in the United States and in infrastructure, companies that hire a lot of workers, and companies that compensate those workers. All those three things uh, are things that Amazon has done uh, for a long, long time, not just in the last couple of years. And the result of following the law has been the, the tax rate that you've talked about. Look, I'm, I, I hear the critics. You know, remember, I came from the Obama administration. Uh, we also believed that the corporate tax rate should come down. We had different ideas about how uh, the windfall from that reduction should be, uh, should be invested rather than added to the deficit. But, but uh, we just follow the law. If, if people have an issue with uh, the, the tax rate that any company pays, they, you know, their issue is with the tax code uh, and not with the company. That's what I've said to Democrats running for president, including my former boss, Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, right. Change the tax but, code and we'll follow that. And, well, and, well, they did, though. You know, our, I mean, they, our, lowered, we just want to level they lowered the rate to right. 21 percent. You're still sure. paying 1.2 percent. I mean, uh, praise right. to for your the lawyers, reasons that uh, I said, you know. Yeah. Well, look, I don't think I don't think it's that complicated. We invest in. You look at the numbers and the amount of money we invested in infrastructure in those years, as well as the amount of money we paid in compensation to our employees uh, uh, during a period which we were hired more people in more places in America than any company uh, that exists. So uh, that's how the tax code's written. I think uh, tax code is written. I think uh, politicians and, and regulators and policymakers have long believed that incentivizing companies to create jobs and invest was the right thing to do. If they change their minds, so be it. We'll follow the law accordingly. And what about, what Did, about here in New York, where the state and city have, uh, you know, have not sure. uh, paid or given incentives to the likes of Alphabet or Facebook or even Apple, who are significantly increased their employment here? Uh, but, of I course, we're ready, to, ready sure. to give you $3 Look, billion dollars as a result of a nationwide contest. Well, let's, let's be clear. I, 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 I'm so happy that you asked me this because here's the difference. New York City and New York State 
came to us with the proposal to invest in Queens, in an area of Queens that they believed uh, 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 needed investment and would benefit from the kind of investment that we were going to make there. The companies you just mentioned, as well as Amazon, uh, have properties in Manhattan, have, have real estate in Manhattan and, and employees in Manhattan. Uh, and you know what? We're not getting incentives for that because Manhattan doesn't require incentives, according to uh, uh, the, uh, the folks who decide on that at the city and state level. If, if the, 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 the request from New York uh, uh, government officials wasn't uh, to lease more space in Manhattan, in some of the highest real estate areas right. and highest investment areas in the country, the request was to go to Queens because they thought that's where uh, well, they wanted the investment. And, and it's a disappointment to us that the offer that the city and state, the mayor and the governor and the economic uh, investment board or development board uh, said they wanted uh, to pursue uh, didn't work out. But, uh, you know, New York's a great place and I think, uh, you know, we'll continue to grow there as we have. Uh, and when people point out that we've leased some new space in Manhattan and say, see, they didn't need subsidies, I think they're missing yeah. the point. Oh, ask the, yeah. ask yeah. the yeah. residents of them. Long Island City how they feel <laughs> mm -hmm. about losing that investment. I think you'll find well, that a majority of them wish we were there. Uh, full disclosure, we have a former colleague who's declared a bid to run against Ocasio-Cortez. I wonder, how would you characterize her role in that deal not happening in Queens? Look, I think uh, there was a bit of a perfect storm uh, and that uh, the congresswoman, whom I respect uh, very much, I, I, and, I, and I, I understand her perspective, I think she uh, misrepresented the facts, uh, perhaps unintentionally, uh, on a number of occasions. And she said things like, well, we could spend that $3 billion, whatever the figure w was, on something else. And, of course, you know and we know that that $3 billion uh, doesn't exist unless Amazon generates it by investing, right? So the money isn't there. Uh, this was uh, incentives that Amazon would have received only after we met the requirements uh, of the arrangement with the city and state uh, by investing heavily and hiring substantially. And only if we met those targets would those incentives kick in. And the money is created yeah. by the tax revenues we generate. So that money doesn't exist. Uh, Amazon's not building a headquarters in Long Island City. That's that's unfortunate. But, you know, we, we, we move on. Uh, and I'm... Uh, uh, I look forward to the, the growth we will have in New York City. Yeah. I mean, looking at the HQ2 process more broadly, though, I wonder, with hindsight being 2020, if you feel like there were mistakes made or you would have done it differently. Oh, boy. We, you know, one of the things I love about the culture at Amazon is that we fully own our mistakes. We, we spend a lot of time looking at our decisions, uh, assuming that we could always do better, and that applies to safety and uh, to investments. Uh, and, and to a lot of things. And having been involved in the HQ2 process, sure, there were ways uh, I wish we could have approached it differently, uh, both in terms of the messaging around it as well as our engagement with uh, uh, governments. But, but I think it's important to note that if you go around the country and talk to uh, those cities that did bid on the process and didn't uh, succeed, a lot of them told us and they said publicly that they felt really good about the process because they were able to highlight why their cities maybe weren't the best possible place for the, you know, the significant investment and the 50,000 jobs that we were looking uh, to place, uh, but were great places for smaller investments. That's how we ended up with a substantial investment in Nashville. Nashville made a bid. It wasn't right for 50,000 employees or even 25,000. But yeah. we decided, separate from HQ2, we're going we're gonna to locate our, our East Coast, our, you know, Eastern uh, operations center there, our logistics center there, with 5,000 new employees. And that's been a great yeah. experience in Nashville and in Tennessee. Jay, two quick ones. Um, one, yeah. is Navarro going to meet with Bezos? <laughs> Look, I think there was just a miscommunication there. Uh, senior executives from Amazon, the experts in this area around counterfeits, have met with uh, 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 Mr. Navarro and his team, as well as others in the government. We're, they are eager okay. to meet again to help solve this problem. We, as you know, I, you know, if, if we want to actually address the issue, uh, the focus, the people who, who have the, the details and understand uh, clearly what the challenge is are the right people to address it. We're, right. the, the idea, as I saw Mr. Navarro say, that we're facilitating counterfeiting, I think is uh, we're, we're spending incredible amounts of money and dedicating enormous resources to fighting counterfeits. Why? Because, as you know, Customer trust is our most important asset. Customers believe 
in us. They order from us because they think they're going to get what they ordered. And any time that customer trust is eroded, that's a huge hit for Amazon. So right. we have an enormous right. yeah. amount at stake in making sure we fight this problem. And then finally, um, this FTC request for information into past acquisitions, is that for show mm -hmm. or is that a real thing? Well, I, you know, this is fresh uh, news and I, 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 I haven't uh, really dug into it. I, I don't know. Look, I, as we, we said before, we'll, we cooperate with, with any government uh, entity that wants to uh, talk to us and, and ask us questions and uh, investigate if, if, if they so desire. Uh, I, 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 what my experience in recent years, I've been at Amazon for almost five years, in terms of acquisitions was, was Whole Foods Market, which, as you know, we, we purchased. Now, uh, when we announced that we were going to acquire Whole Foods, you would have thought, based on uh, television commentary and uh, uh, commentary in both uh, Washington, D.C., among uh, government officials as well as uh, in the elite uh, newspapers, that we were taking over grocery in America, that we were instantly <laughs> going to be the largest grocery in America, because we were, in fact, buying the grocery store that a lot of those folks shop at. But as you know, Whole Foods is one of the smallest known grocery chains in America. But, but I do with wonder Foods, if this throws with cold Whole Foods, water we're about on... three or four percent of grocery. Uh, uh, you know, many, many of the chains you know, the big names you know, are just significantly bigger than we are. So if as a competition matter, it's hard to argue. It's, I, I don't see the argument that we're somehow uh, 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 anti-competitive in grocery at three or four percent of the right. market. Jay, I mean, appreciate we'll see. that very much. Look, we, 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 we look, we're going to, we spend a lot of time, my team spends a lot of time uh, on these issues. We understand that we have both uh, well-meaning critics uh, as well as uh, self-serving critics, self-interested critics. We try to uh, work with the former and then uh, politely disagree with the latter.